Do we, do I need uh, headphones or anything? Was it two weeks ago we recorded something? The fucking thing wasn't actually recording. Like, yeah. like oh, I, I, we've done that uh, quite a few times. Yeah. And before we get started, he just will ask you what we're drinking. I think we can ad lib from there. Yeah. Pretty. Yeah, and I I think I'll just kind of ad lib off the idea. But yeah, I think that'll work good. And I'll kind of do a good um uh, balance where we, we retain the joke. But uh, you guys can shit on Rolling Rock, but I'll just kind of like, I'll, I'll sort of shit on it, but not too much. Where like, because they like me, they, they like me a lot, so I'm not, I'm not gonna, you know. Oh yeah, but, okay. You know, do you get free, fine, though, yeah. do you get free Rolling Rock? Uh, yeah, actually one of the kegs of it, actually. Really? really? Cool. Jeez. I still have the kegs, um, which actually were supposed to be, and I, I got like these cases and cases of it. But anyway, that was for the Echo the Dolphin video. Where I fill a um, a pool with, with ro supposedly I fill the pool with Rolling Rock, but. Anyway. <laughs> oh, I remember that one. Yeah. Yeah, I tried to open the keg just so that I could have something pouring out. I found out the hard way. You're not supposed to open a keg. No, no, <laughs> you know? no, no. You tap a keg, you don't open it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, it didn't go so well. I guess we can all agree that we love the '80s remake. So then, what's the best '80s remake? <laughs> Oh, the best of all the 80s remakes? Yeah. Huh, well, I guess the ones I mentioned, but I, if I had to pick one, like, maybe The Fly. Yeah, I'd probably go with, as much as I love The Thing, I think I'd go with The Fly, too. Yeah. It's a bit more deeper as far as, like, mm -hmm. you know, all, all the subject matter and stuff like that. I was going to say The Thing. Yeah. Right? But that's a tough one, you know? Yeah. You know, that's, that's a tough choice. It is, yeah. That's kind of like, I was thinking the other day, like, you've got three big blockbuster franchises. So you got Halloween, Friday the 13th, and Nightmare on Elm Street. I was just, it just popped in my head the other day. I was like, out of those three, if you had to pick one, what would be, what would be maybe the best? Like, taking your bias out of it, say, what would, what do you guys think would be the best out of all those? Wow. <laughs> That's tough. There's, there's good ones and there's shit ones well, this, out of each. The thing is, they all got shitty at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to, you have to more gauge the shit than the good, almost. <laughs> the way the shit, you know. <laughs> well, like some of them, you know, like the first movie was the only one that was really good. Like Halloween, I mean, really, like the first one is, it's just by far the the, the best. It was the most original, and. Um, uh, but the thing is, w I'm, I'm also thinking of it as like, well, which one had the best sequels then? And, and I think I'm going to go with Nightmare on Elm Street for that, because at least we had like all those um, different concepts with dreams. And, you know, we had the dream warriors and um, all these different things you can do with that with that idea. And even though it had, you know, some shitty moments and some good moments, it still, I think, was a really... Um, you know, fascinating series. Um, whereas, like, Halloween kind of got more just, like... And Friday the 13th, it was kind of, you know, <laughs> the same thing after a while, so... Yeah. I'd say, because you said taking your bias out of it, yeah, right? Yeah, taking your... Yeah, because yeah. obviously we all have our yeah. favorites, right? But then I think if you, if you take your bias out of it, you have to look at it really like, which which franchise made the most money? <laughs> and that would probably be what that's the best one, right? Because it made the most money. <laughs> yeah. You know, because uh, if, if my bias isn't there, what the fuck does my opinion matter? <laughs> well, well, I mean, like, you know, you have your favorites, but I mean, what do you th just simply think is the best, right? But... Yeah, I don't know. I'd go with Halloween just because the first one is still better than all the other first ones. Yeah. So it's like the first one trumps all the others so much where it's like, I don't know. It would make a good chart. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. It would. Friday the 13th sequel is awesome. Same with Nightmare on Elm Street, the sequel is yep. awesome, like the second one. But Halloween is like, it's not awesome, but it's really good. So yeah. it's maybe a notch below. It's like, man, you could keep going. Yeah, yeah it would take forever to figure that out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, liked her, I liked Hereditary though, but I don't think you liked Hereditary. I didn't, I didn't. Overall, I didn't like it, yeah. but I liked parts of it. Yeah. Like, yeah. I really loved when that girl gets her head whacked against that <laughs> fucking... I mean, that was awesome. <laughs> it's like so tragic. <laughs> but the whole... That whole scene is just crazy. Not yeah. just for that, but like, you know... The aftermath. Yeah. yeah. And of course, that oh, yeah. sets up the whole movie too, yeah. right? 
Yeah, yeah, and I remember at the at the end when like uh, everything's dark and like you see like there's that guy in the doorway that sort of just it's really dim like you can sort of see him, and then like I remember the the mom when she's like she's doing that thing where she's like banging her head on the ceiling like I was like what the fuck this is you know. Um, but that, that's like a rewatch movie too, because like if you go back, like I heard there's all kinds of hidden things. So like the, the story kind of makes more sense. Uh, you just find like all these different clues and stuff. Huh. See, I didn't know that. That's interesting. Yeah. Like the, there's like, um, entire, like, like you could find like a blog or something that with screenshots that sort of like just lays down everything, uh, like dissects the, the movie. Um, so it is definitely worth uh, rewatching. I, I've seen it twice now, but but I feel like each time you'll probably notice more, uh, you know, more stuff. Yeah. See, that's an interesting topic too. Now, what movie do you guys think has a lot of rewatchability? Uh, There's well, well most of those '80s. Well, most of those '80s horror movies, I think, do like. There's just so many, you know. I think that's, yeah, what, that's well. what's great about '80s horror is most of them are all pretty damn rewatchable. Yeah. 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 Like like one hmm like a really good rewatch one that where you uh rewatch it all the time like all the time. No, well, there's wow. so many. You know. <laughs> yeah, I know. For me, there's so many. It's it's, <laughs> it's actually pathetic. You know, you know how many movies I've rewatched how many times? It's kind of yeah. disgusting. <laughs> I mean, I guess since it's fresh in my mind, the, the old dark house again because um what I've been noticing James Whale had this like sort of sense of humor in his films that you know. Uh, where the humor wasn't so obvious, it was kind of, sub, you know, really subdued. And I remember always hearing The Old Dark House was kind of like a comedy. And, and I remember having seen it tons and tons of times. Um, at, at first, I'm like, well, there's nothing funny in it. It's not really like a comedy in, in any way. But I, the more I see it, the more I start appreciating the humor. It just gets funnier. Like the, um, uh, Ernest Thessinger as Horace Femme is, is so funny. There's like a scene where uh, the electricity goes out or something, and then he goes, "Okay, well, we'll be miserable all evening." And he says it as he's like sipping his gin. <laughs> I don't know, just the way he says it. Yeah, that, that's a, that's an odd choice for a movie that you love to rewatch. Not that it's it is a great movie, but it's not like full of all this like action-packed stuff happening that's gonna keep you watching and glued to the the TV all the time, you know. Yeah, because like the first time I saw it, I was like, wait a minute, like, like nothing happens in this movie. Well, not much happens. Like they, they go to this this old house and there's just this weird family. The butler gets drunk and there's like a psycho locked in a, a room. But that's that's about it. Um, like stuff doesn't really happen till the end. But it's all about the, uh, the just the mood and just like there's there's no music in that movie. It's just the sound of thunder the whole time. And, and there's all those weird shots of... Uh, of um, uh, Rebecca Femme in the uh, the mirror, like the, the old woman, um, and you see like all the shots of, the, of her face as she's talking. They, they do all these cool little shots, and yeah, I mean, it's just it's just one of those movies. It's like every frame in it, I, I just find something to love. It's weird, like the color on mine is, is kind of gotten kind of red. So I mean, you could do it if, if you do any color correction. You might want to just like desaturate desaturate mine a little bit, just because it's like it's just looking kind of reddish. That's probably just because I got the weird, you know, lights going on and stuff. It's so my my least favorite thing about editing actually is color correction sometimes. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. You're guessing it, you're always second guessing yourself. Yeah. And every monitor like looks a little different here, looks different on this TV, on a computer, yeah. at work, it looks different. Yeah. And then it's like, oh wait, I got this this one. I'm gonna change this shot, but oh, does that mean I have to change that shot too? Just weird, now it's like it's recording a different ratio. I thought that was weird. You saw me when I moved the pumpkin in the beginning, I'm like, why is the pumpkin not in the shot? So it's like the first shot is in uh, like 4.3 that I just did, but now it's doing 16.9. New movie recording, okay. I get in phases, like for me. So like, I know you know the, the by fog phase there. Yeah, your fog phase. I think phase. I mentioned that to you guys a couple weeks back or whatever. Oh. I got into the fucking fog, like, oh man. It was for like two months straight, like <laughs> every weekend, whenever I'd start get, I'd start drinking or whatever. And then like, 
I'd have like a few too many and be like, something would snap into me. It's like, I gotta watch the fucking fog. I gotta put it in. Yeah. Then my girlfriend is like, again? You're watching it again? It's like, I wouldn't even say anything. I wouldn't, I wouldn't get drawn <laughs> into an argument. I just put it in. Like, you know what? For some reason, man, I don't know. <laughs> you, you know what? The fog has be in a different kind of way. It's it's become like a rewatch movie for me every Halloween because I've actually become interested in the uh, the radio parts of it. You know, like this is Stevie Wayne. Look out for the fog bank. You know that really relaxing voice and all that like jazz music that they play. Um, somebody put that all together on YouTube. Um, I. I, I don't remember offhand where it is but uh but if you look it up you'll probably find that it's a kab um the fog radio um so basically it's like all the different songs that you'd hear but then sp sporadically you would hear uh the, the dj uh, stevie wayne and it sort of creates this relaxing mood but a little bit creepy because it's like oh that fog bank is coming so i've kind of made it a tradition to at least try to listen to that once um uh, because it just puts you in the mood like you're in the movie. Right. That's pretty cool, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be cool, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. like you, that. You, you were in a fog watching the fog, basically. <laughs> yeah. Lost in the fog. <laughs> oh, right. Uh, hang on a second. My, my video stopped here. Let me see what's going on. Oh, never mind. Am I in the wrong? Oh, I don't know. Hold on. Let me see what's happening here. Yeah, we were talking. I'm talking about Evil Dead too, so we, we we got a lot of it. I think it might have just froze, like just recently. So just sleep in the car. Yeah, like some <laughs> bum. Y'all sleep in the car outside of your own house, yeah. and like you're not even living in the house. Yeah. Like <laughs> wake up and like shave in the car too, like in the car, yeah. in the, the, the mirror. And... Yeah. <laughs> The neighbors are all watching. What the fuck are you doing? What the fuck is this guy doing? Okay, this clip three. All right. Trilogies back in the day, most of them were always kind of like uh, pretty much the first one over and over again. So since we're talking about Evil Dead, would you say that like the Evil Dead trilogy was probably one of the first trilogies, the first one that like every movie was completely different almost? Yeah, 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 like it's, true. it wasn't cookie cutter. It was not a cookie cutter series at the time. Yeah, at all. I can't think of another series like that where two is where, so like, much different than one, and then three is so much different than two. Like Texas Chainsaw Massacre's two is is really different from the first one, but then the third one kind of goes back to form, right? So kind of, yeah. So I can't think of another trilogy that's like that pushed the boundaries. In each movie, so much further. Yeah, yeah. Like the only—I mean, I'm, I'm struggling to think, but like the only thing I can think is like like uh, ones that stayed a trilogy too. I mean, that's also tough. Like because I would say like the first three Halloweens. Like if the, if if you had just seen Halloween three and that was the newest one, that's pretty different. That's pretty but different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but one and two are are, are very similar. So. Um, yeah. You could maybe argue the, uh, like, Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, and Day. They're kind of, yeah, they're, they're all oh, yeah. very different They're all from very each different. Other. Even though they're the same subject matter, they're all very different. Yeah. yeah, that's good. But then, yeah, the Evil Dead movies, the same subject matter, right? right? Yeah. But they're all different. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I liked how the, the Dead movies are all a, a decade apart. I mean, the first three, it was like, you know, Night, Dawn, Day, and each one was like... You know, we got the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, and each one of those represents the decade in which they were made. Oh, yeah, 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 product yeah. of their time, eh? Yeah. Day of the yeah. Dead for us was a bit of a sleeper. When we first watched Day of the Dead, we didn't really dig it. Yeah. Um, but then later on, man, it's one of my favorite zombie movies of all yeah. time now. It's definitely in yeah. my top five. Yeah, same here. I think everybody's, um, a lot of people's had that experience where, like, the first time you see Day of the Dead, it's like, Oh, like none of these characters are likable or anything, but then you, you see it more times and you and it, you really appreciate it more. Like, like that's like the whole point is like all this humanity is just degrading and they're just all like 
scumbags in that movie. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, I love Day of the Dead. Yeah. It's yeah. So good. Yeah, and yeah. you got the yeah. you got the good people, right? The scientists and all yeah. that. And then you got the such a stark contrast between everybody. And the military. The scientists versus the military is quite yeah. it's, it's a bit of a statement there, of course. Yeah. It's probably Romero's last zombie movie with a real big statement, you know. Oh yeah. Land of the Dead a little yeah. bit, you know. Mm -hmm. I like Land of the Dead. I don't know. A lot of people Oh I do too. Yeah, yeah, I like Land of the Dead. I mean, not as much as, as you know, the, the first three, but still, yeah, I liked it. Yeah, it's it's good. I like how it takes place, like, after society is starting to finally rebuild itself and become mm -hmm. something again, but somebody has to go and fuck it yeah, up, right? Yeah. It's always that, it's always the, the human part of yeah, it, right, yeah. that fucks everything up. Yeah, it's always about greed. Yeah, and, and fucking people. People yeah. suck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, we're all fans of 80s horror. Uh, would you say that 80s is like the best decade for horror? Or, I know James loves his Universal stint there in the 30s and 40s, but... Yeah, that's a tough question. Like the best man. decade in horror. A decade. I'm gonna have to go with the 80s, because just, man, the output was insane. Mm-hmm. Everything was fun, you know? Yeah. If, it was, if it was a bad movie, it was at least still kind of fun. Right. So even the bad stuff was enjoyable in a way. That's... You go for this one, James. <laughs> I gotta think about Pick this a, decade. a little bit. Best decade in horror. I got Best an idea. but it, it, It's so different, though. Like, it, it, it's like... Different. Yeah, like, like the 80s decade, like, it's... It's so different from the 30s and 40s, so... Um, and even the 30s and 40s are different from each other, so it's like... Like I really, I, f I feel like my favorite period would kind of be like the early 30s, like um, the pre-code movies, because they were just so, you know, sound movies were new, so they didn't really have a lot of music most of the time, and, and that silence just made it creepier, and it was just so, um, like, cutting edge at that time. Um, but the, the amount of output, yeah, I mean, the 80s was just like, insane like you, you had vhs laser disc and, and uh, beta um ced like all these formats were going on at the same time you had cable tv and and you know th theater everything was all kind of going on at the same exact time and it was like just like complete madness and 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 they were just pumping out movies to, to fill each of the, these you know like direct-to-video movies and theatrical movies and you know, TV movies. Made for TV, just, yeah. 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 Just, Justin, you got one? I like the 70s. Yeah. I like yeah. I like the 70s. I think I think the 70s... See, if, if they're so, the 70s and 80s are so different. Yeah. It's such yeah. a stark contrast. It, it almost depends on what kind of mood you're, mood you're in, right? It's like, are you in the mood for a slow burn kind of movie? Well, it's the 70s. Are you in the mood for a fast-paced action kind of horror movie? Yeah. It's the 80s. It's like... Yeah, there was like a year, um, or like a, a sequence of, of years in the 70s where it was like every year there was like some new movie that was like, this is now the scariest horror film. Yeah, it like pushed the boundaries, right? Yeah, so you had The Exorcist in, in 73, and then... The following year, 74, you had Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and then, like, um, uh, was Jaws 75 or 76? 75, I think. Five. So Jaws came after that, and then, you know, soon enough, you know, you have Halloween and Alien, and, like, it was just, like, every movie was kind of just taking it a whole new step. So if, I think you can say that the 70s might be the most, one of the most influential, like, or important decades in mm -hmm. horror as far as like influencing the next decade. Yeah. You know, like yeah. It, it really like what happened in the seventies really kind of shaped everything that happened yeah. after. I think, it, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think the seventies is probably my favorite decade yeah. really. I, I there's so many movies I like from the seventies. Oh, don't forget uh, Young Frankenstein was from the seventies too. <laughs> so you had that as well. Yeah. You, you can't go without your black and white horror comedy, so Maybe yeah, I may have to change my. <laughs> yeah, you know, maybe the seventies. <laughs> yeah, you still had black because I was like, I was thinking like, oh wait, so seventies, you're all it's totally in color by this by this point. I was like, oh wait a minute, no, 
No, Young Frankenstein. Yeah, yeah, yeah they still went yeah. back to the black and white. Yeah. 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 Mel Brooks is one of the few people that, that I, I know of who, who's still alive who's seen the original Frankenstein in the theater in 1931. <laughs> and he... And he says it was terrifying. Like, like in 1931, that movie was really scary. That's awesome. That is fucking yeah. awesome. Fucking Mel yeah. Brooks. He's got to be what in his 90s, like late 90s. I believe 96. Here, let's find. All right, age of Mel Brooks. This must be a. Uh, um, yeah, he's been. He's he's uh like. He was there for like the early age of television. Like he was, he's kind of like his career has spanned like every, um, you know, every type of media basically. It's fucking yeah, that's awesome, man. <laughs> yeah. Mel Brooks uh, is ninety seven. Ninety seven years old. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Shit. Yeah, the guy still his mind is sharp yep. as. Oh, that's what I I saw Terminator pretty young. Um, but there was that one scene where my dad had to like cover my eyes, which is pretty tame nowadays, but um, the what? The love scene? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Where, you know, it's not very explicit, you know, compared to nowadays, but it's, it, it's just that you have this action movie when there's like, all you have to worry about is the violence and the blood, whatever. And then that just comes up and it's like, yeah, my dad's like, uh, you know. You uh, cover your eyes from the chin eating. You know, like, <laughs> eating his chin and shit. Like, yeah. Yeah, it looks like Michael Bean is a messy kisser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I never fuck. understood that scene. Like, he's all over her fucking face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, dirty, like he's wearing yeah. some bum's pants. You stole his bum's pants and everything. <laughs> he's like, yeah, yeah like, you don't know where that's big. <laughs> and that one put, yeah, get a... Get away from me with your <laughs> pants and your bum pants. Even when he when he steals the bum's pants and he starts to run away, you see all those stains on yeah. the ass part, yeah. man. Yeah. And like, ugh. <laughs> yeah, gotta do what you gotta do. When you're naked from the future, yeah, you yeah. do what you gotta do. Yeah, when you're naked from the future. Bouncing off that, so Total Recall, those kind of scenes are disturbing and fucked us up. Has there been any non-horror movie scenes that kind of fucked us up as kids? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure, but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> oh, fuck, I can't. You I'd go say, first. I'd say it probably was like that Total Recall stuff is a good example of yeah, like that's Quato a... was scary and... It's funny because, fuck, I had like a whole bunch of ideas. Like, I remember like <laughs> getting onto the, yeah, like Terminator even, the future scenes it... actually scared the shit out of me as a kid. Like. Where the, infil where the Terminators infiltrate the human's lair. Yeah. When Kyle Reese is retelling the story and you see like where the Terminator turns and you see the his red eyes. Like, yeah. that part's that fucking scary. scary. You know, uh, Pee-wee's Big Adventure, you know, Large Marge, that was... Large that Marge, was, yeah. Yeah, that was a big one. And also, there was this made-for-TV movie, uh, Alice in Wonderland. Um, and it was a two-parter, uh, like, miniseries. And the first part ends with uh, the Jabberwocky, and like Alice is like alone. You, you know what I'm talking yes, about? Yes, yeah, <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, and like I don't think at the time I knew that there was two parts because I don't even think I saw the second part, but I saw the first part, and then it ends with that, and I think I was so traumatized, like I was, you know, didn't even want to like. Uh, I didn't even like bother with the second part after that, or, or I wasn't even aware, I'm not sure, but uh, uh, it was so freaky, and I was like, how could a, any kind of um, movie or program end that way? And um, yeah, I, I, I feel like um, my sister saw it too. Like we both kind of saw it at the same time, and we like talked about it afterwards, and, and we're like, did you see that? Like what happened? Like like and um in our minds we started making it more scary than it really was like we just kept like, kind of embellishing it so with every retelling of what we saw it just got like more and more you know terrifying but uh yeah no that was a that, very impressionable yeah i remember that 
And I'm going to change my pick for like a, a, a non-horror movie that fucked me up as a kid. It was another made-for-TV movie, and it was just called David. <laughs> and it was about this, it's a true story, which made it worse, about this asshole dad who like kidnapped his own son because he was divorced from the, his wife. And to get back at her, he like sets his own son on fire in this like <laughs> hotel. And it's based off a real story, and that movie scared the shit out of yeah, me. Yeah, it's crazy. That fun. was... And it's crazy. They made some fucked up made-for-TV movies back in the day, yep, man. Yep, yep. Wow, yeah, I haven't seen that one. Oh, don't. I <laughs> still... <laughs> don't. Well, there, there is that... There is also that movie, like, for me, like, I showed you guys the VHS of that, the, To Catch a Killer with Brian Dennehy, where he plays John Wayne Gacy. I remember that movie scared me, too, where they... Because he buried all the kids in that crawl space, eh? And then, like, in the movie... They find all the bodies and shit. And I remember, like, my parents, when we were watching it all together, you know, at the time, you don't, as a kid, you don't know anything about any of that shit, like the real shit that happened. I remember my parents, they were all serious about it, too. They're like, oh, yeah, like, and they, were, they told me, like, a bunch of shit that he did. I was like, what, what, that happened? This was real? That yeah. was actually real? I was like, holy fuck, that scared the shit out of me. I wanted to do this first and I forgot. Maybe I'll cut it in, put it first. Did okay. you did you want to like tease that you have something really special happening for Halloween? Not to say that what you're doing, but Yeah, sure. Um the exorcist thing, I could, you know, we could we can Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah, did you want to like ask it and then I'll just say it real quick and then if, if you want to use it you could throw it. No worries either way, but if, if you wanted to throw in the beginning or something. Several Michael Myers versus Pinhead scripts <laughs> floating around, wow. but it's like they just couldn't like, because they're so they're totally different. different, right? They're like yeah. a different, completely different world. Well then again at the same time, uh, you know, Jason and, and Freddy are, are very different too. Like. A lot of people kind of before that came out was like how that how is that going to work because Freddy is like in a dream and he's like, you know, he can do almost anything. It wouldn't be a fair fight. It doesn't make sense. But they made it make sense as much as they could, and yeah, um, yeah. yeah. you know, to their benefit, they made it work the best they could. Yeah, considering how different everything is. Yeah, yeah. I can see Michael Myers being like a Jason. Yeah. Right, because Michael Myers is actually kind of shitty. Like, you know, like in the grand scheme, right? Yeah. He's kind of, he doesn't do anything. He just walks around just walks silently around. Yeah. and stabs people. So... Yeah, like he's more human. He's not like supernatural. Well, I mean, depending on your viewpoint of Michael Myers, he's not really a supernatural thing. He's more like just a, you know, somebody who just snapped. Yeah. So one of the unmade scripts just to quickly sum it up was that the the Cenobites were actually controlling Michael Myers from the beginning when he was a kid there's like they added a scene where like kid Michael Myers finds the puzzle box and kind of opens it that Halloween night before he kills his sister and that's what makes him kill his and then later on Pinhead, like, you know, and the Cenobites, like, okay, we want you back, and there's that, a fight. Yeah. That actually sounds pretty good, you yeah. know? Yeah. <laughs> I'd kind of be down for that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's, yeah. it's... <laughs> Thanks for coming on the show, James. It's, uh... Sure, yeah. Chatting with you about horror movies and our love of horror. Yeah. I had a blast. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Until next time, keep drinking. Yeah. None of that rolling rock shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> okay, take care, James. All right, see ya. All right, we'll see you next week.